Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to Inside Quest. We are the personal assistant for your brain. Our goal is to bring on amazing people who can help you create a wealthy mind. And if you're looking to invest in your intellect, there is no better guest than the man joining us today. He's a formerly homeless, two-time felon turned entrepreneur, optimist, and TEDx speaker. He's living proof that it does not matter where you start, it only matters where you wanna go and how hard you are willing to work to get there. And he's had to work hard to get just about anywhere. Due to his felony convictions, he was turned down for roughly 150 jobs. But rather than make excuses and give up or double down on a life of crime, while at rock bottom, living in his car, he accepted that no one but him controlled his destiny. In a flash of inspiration, he realized that he didn't need to look for a job, he needed to create one. That moment of inspiration was so forceful that he began the process of mining his own mind for other undiscovered insights. What resulted was a torrent of concise, wildly impactful principles for success that he believed he could live by. He began posting these powerful notes uh, on the roof of his car and he put them there so that he could stare at them as he obsessively lay contemplating how to change his current situation and develop what he calls a wealthy mind. That insight, write, post, obsessive feedback loop put him in a virtuous cycle that lifted him out of negativity and spurred him to action. And without waiting for permission or encouragement from anyone else, this man who previously could not get a job founded his own company and began printing his new slogans on t-shirts and selling them on the street corner with the contagious enthusiasm of a street preacher. His positivity, hard work, and endless hustle were so effective that his first two shirts alone sold 5,000 units without the use of a distribution partner. And since that first taste of success, he has publicly stated that he's dedicating his considerable energies and talents to positively impacting the lives of a billion, buh, billion people, and people have started to take note. He's been sponsored by some of the largest companies in the world, including Procter & Gamble, The Home Depot, and The Huffington Post, as well as featured on mainstream media. Please help me in welcoming the man who speaks dreams into existence, the founder and CEO of Wealthy Minds, Inc., billionaire PA. Thank you. I want to know how much I got to pay you to do an introduction at all my speeches. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need that right there. <laughs> Sitting here today, man, is, is all the payment indeed. So we comb the world to find people that really have gleaned some interesting insights that can offer people something to, in our language, pull them out of the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. To give them what you call a wealthy mind. It's incredibly powerful. Your story is amazing. Um, walk me through how you go from living in your car to having the guts to say you want to help positively impact a billion people. That's a pretty big chasm. Um, I, I honestly believe that if people are not calling you crazy, your dream isn't big enough. <laughs> Fair enough. And, you know, I come from a background of, you know, I, I got sentenced for, you know, selling drugs, a five-year sentence. I caught a conspiracy charge, a three-year sentence. When I was in my truck, I rewrote my whole life. Mm. I turn all my negative quotes, like quotes like, uh, never spend your present time with a person that you don't have a future with. I wrote that quote because I was hanging out with people that I didn't have a future with, and that's why I continue to get in trouble. And then I wrote this quote that says, rich people hang with rich people, wealthy people hang with wealthy people, and broke people hang with broke people. Well, I was broke and I wanted to change not just my pockets, but my mental thought process. So I started writing into existence what it is that I wanted in my life. And I wanted to see if the words that you speak really work. So I wrote 5,000 quotes. Wow. And then I put it in the universe and I tested it. And you know, anybody that knows me know that I write the dream down and then I prove it to you. Because I want to show people the po that I'm a living example of what I actually speak about. That if you speak, if you're broke, you're broke because that's what you've spoken into existence. You've broke because, you know, you have not dedicated your life to hanging around wealthy people. Like, you know, you can't possibly hang around someone like Oprah for three years and be broke. Like, <laughs> she's not even gonna allow that. <laughs> At least I'm not. <laughs> so I'm speaking that into existence. It's incredible. So you have a way of codifying knowledge, like making it really concise, super punchy, powerful, memorable. Um, and I've, 
I've had sort of a long standing interest in exactly what you just said, which is how much of that stuff really works, right? Like if I'm, if I'm saying it to myself a lot and uh, I'm saying it to other people, does that actually change my behavior? Um, my belief to the core of my being is that it does. And I believe as it seems like you're completely living out in your life, I really think that a huge part of my success came from early having to develop mantras and things that I just say over and over and over. Why, why do you think it works? And in what ways is your life, like give me something specific, uh, one of the phrases you just mentioned or a different one that you've, through repetition, seen it come to fruition. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a prime example of one that I honestly just spoke into existence. I wrote on 2-12-2016, I said, I speak into existence that my brother, Devon Franklin, will write the forward in my new book, My Mind is Wealthy. And after that, I think it was like three months of just persistency, of continuously emailing him, following up with him, because I know his schedule is busy. It's not busy, but productive. And on May the 4th, 2016, at 4.41 p.m., we got an email from him with the forward attached. Wow. And I put this stuff out there to show people, hey, y'all remember that dream I wrote? You know, I, I wrote this down on a dream card. Every time, any, everyone knows I walk around with black dream cards. I walk around with my gold pen. I would never sign an autograph or anything without my gold ink pen because that gold represents that it's set in stone. What I'm actually speaking, you cannot erase this. The reason the card is black is because I'm building my dream on a solid foundation of trust, loyalty, of respect. If it's jeopardized my morals, I don't want any parts of it. Words mean a lot to you. It was really interesting just now when you said he's busy, you stopped yourself and went back and said productive. Um, that's really interesting. Is it because you're doing something to remind yourself not to think of being busy but to think of being productive? Absolutely. I, my personal belief is I wrote a quote that says, busy is equivalent to being broke. Productive is equivalent to making profits. I never, it's a lot of people that's busy. You know, I, yeah, every, everybody got 24 hours in a day. Right. You know, um, a lot of people tell me that money isn't everything, but being broke wasn't everything either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to see what it's like to be wealthy. <laughs> you know, I've been broke 22 years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I like helping people, man. It's my life, you know, and that's pretty much what we focus on. Like there's a, I have a, I created my own dictionary when I was in my car and there were certain words that I deleted. And you asked me a question about, uh, do these things really work? Well, there's a difference when you say, I want to be a billionaire versus I am a billionaire. You see, the, my, my energy and my, my body says what, what my mouth actually says. I'm not thinking this is going to work. I know it's going to work because I believe it. I'm crazy enough to believe that I am going to speak into existence that it's going to happen. Here's what I like about you, because there's a real danger, and I know some people watching right now, um, they're going to dismiss you foolishly because they hear you saying, oh, if you say it, it's just going to happen, right? Which that, when people say that, I actually want to headbutt them. The reason I want to headbutt them, and the reason I have no desire to headbutt you other than I would fear messing up the, the beautifully colored hair, is you act. Like your whole thing is, dude, execute, right? It's not enough to have a dream. You've got to get out there and you've got to execute on that. And you push that agenda, even in the story that you just told, which is really incredible of you know, tweeting out, hey, this person is incredibly meaningful to me. I want them to write the forward to my book. But you followed it up by persistence, right? You, Persistent. you he'll, he'll tell you, <laughs> persistently. <laughs> if I want to do some work with you, I'm going to persistently reach out to you because it's my dream. No one is going to love your dream the way that you do. But like you said, it's not just about speaking it. It's about getting up and executing it. Nobody in here can argue with results. Whether you like me or not, I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to execute a dream. It's incredible. I'm not here. I don't like I, I, I look at like, you know, the way that this world is going. We're so social media driven that I wrote a quote for the millennium generation. If you got less money in the bank than you got followers on Instagram, you need to get you a new group of friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to have 10,000 followers and don't have $10,000 like people. We got to learn how to start using our resources. You got to let your ego go and start asking for help. You know, there's, there are people really out here struggling in these streets, and that's who my message is for. It's not about me just, I want to be a billionaire. I'm going to make a billion dollars for fun. Most people can't do that seriously. Yeah, it's, um, 
There's a complexity to your message that I think is really interesting and I want to break it down piece by piece because I think it's super, super potent. So first of all, I think people assume when they hear your name that billionaire PA means that you're after a billion dollars and you've said very publicly that it's not, that it's about helping a billion people, which I think is incredible. Um, when you talk, I feel that Jay-Z lyric, uh, I can't help the poor if I'm one of them, so I got rich and gave back to me, that's the win-win. Um, is that how you feel? Absolutely. I think that money is a promissory note that acquires debt. Knowledge is a promissory note that acquires power. I'm going after the power so I can help my culture, help my people. You can't, I don't know too many broke people that change the world. That's interesting. Um, I w I'm gonna push on that one because I want people to hear what you're saying because most anybody will controversially point out Mother Teresa, Gandhi, you could argue whether Gandhi had money or not. Um, what does money mean to you? It's a promissory note that acquires debt. I'm more into wealth, and wealth doesn't mean what's in your bank account. It means who's in your, your relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, relationships make this world go round. Who do you actually know that can help you to manifest that dream into existence? You know, and I'm, my dream is to teach people the value to put their trust in cultivating relationships, not in the money. Yeah, that, I love that because you, you certainly speak to the power of money as a very transformative element, which I respond to incredibly well. Um, but the, the way that you differentiate between rich and wealthy, I find supremely important. To you, is wealth partly um, uh, fulfillment, emotional, spiritual fulfillment? You know, to me, it's like, you don't, I don't have to be financially rich to be wealthy. You know, I'm not just uh, wealthy people focus on, you know, now that I'm here at this level of success, how can I teach people how to do what I, I did? How can I teach, go back and build schools that teach kids how to create jobs? How can we help with this homeless stuff downtown? Since I see nobody else is going to do anything about it, that's why we created a program called Sponsor a Homeless. When people say, most of the time, people say they want to do interviews with me, I say, you can catch me on the streets and you can bring your cameras because that's where I'll be. <laughs> I love that. There, so when I was reading your story and watching your videos and stuff and you get to the point where you're sitting in your car, you're at the lowest, you've got, um, can't get a job, you don't have a house. I love the way you differentiate between being homeless and not having a home. I think that's actually really strong. But you're sitting there, what anybody else would, um, they're just unbeatable odds. And from that, your answer becomes to found a company. Looking at wealthy people and seeing the way that they give back, but not having a billion dollars yourself, you still cut right to the chase and go, but what they're really trying to do is help people. I can help people directly. There's a lot of power in that. How did you come to that? How did you come to any of these conclusions? I mean, you have 5,000 quotes. So where is this stuff coming from? Um, a lot of it, truthfully, when I was in my truck, I took ownership in all the mistakes that I had, that I had committed. Like I wrote a quote that says, I lie so much, my, li my last lie introduced me to the value of truth. <laughs> <laughs> like I wrote quotes like, it's okay for your pockets to be broke, just make sure your mind makes sense. I wrote quotes like, my mama had screws in her leg like Superman had in his head. Doctor said she'd never walk again. I told the woman, close your eyes, use your mind. I taught my mama how to glide. So I wrote these when, you, when they quotes to, to, to other people, this is my life. It was easy for me to write this. You know, because this is the stuff that I went through and it's just my way of expressing it through quotes. Your quotes often start negative and then flip around to be positive. How the hell did you do that? How did you go? Because it's really in some ways representative of your life, right? Absolutely. Two time felon, most people give up, they go for the third, put me away. Um, how did you flip that in your own head? How did you know they all started negative? You, you paid attention to that? I've researched you oh, more I, than your mother. <laughs> 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 I wanted to know because that's a great question. <laughs> I intentionally did that. <laughs> yes. I intentionally started every quote with a negative because I think that society has taught our generation to learn from a negative perspective. And I start negative, but I end positive. Because sometimes when someone tells you, oh, you can do that, 90% of people don't believe they can, they can do it. So I would start like, Stuff like, um, I just tested positive with MTD. I got your attention because even whether you know it or not, what does he have? Motivated transmitted disease. If you touch me, look at me, email me or hate on me, I will infect you all with motivation. It's like I'm slipping the message in on you. 
You know, and I don't care. Whatever it takes you to get up, speak your dream into existence, that's all I care about is helping people, bringing cultures together, being a part of platforms like this, you know? So thank you for paying attention to that. <laughs> and it's, it's my honor. So understand that my, I have a mission in life. Uh, my mission is about transformation, whether it's body or mind, which is why Quest Nutrition does the food and Inside Quest, which is it's all the same thing for me, does the mind. Um, getting, it's, it's to me, those two sides of the equation are exactly like money. To have money but not fulfillment is totally pointless. Yeah. Uh, and to have fulfillment but not have resources to help others or to, make, to manifest your own dreams would be very frustrating. So I, I understand the beauty in the balance of the two. Um, and wanting to help somebody get their body together, that makes a lot of sense. But if you neglect the mind, I think you've really missed a trick. And so my whole thing is I want people to live the most empowering, authentic, joyful, beautiful life that they can possibly live, right? But it's not gonna happen by accident. And there's something really, really weird about the human brain. We won't go into that here, but I feel like um, you have figured out the only fix for the problem that I know. And that is you look inwardly for the logic of the mind and you grab a hold of it through phrases that you can repeat that remind you how to think. And I think that when people hear a negative thought, that negative thought rings true. And when they hear a positive thought, that thought rings false. I don't know why that is in the human mind, but it is. And what happens, if you look at the statistics, kids that do the best in professional sports, something like two thirds of them were the oldest kid in their class. Now why would that matter? Because they're gonna be slightly bigger and stronger in their formative years. So the lessons they begin to learn are you are better, you are faster, you are stronger. So even when other people catch up with them, they've just got a belief system that they're invincible. So they may come up against somebody who is truly better, stronger from a physical perspective, but because they don't have the mindset, they can't win. They did this study in rats and they said, what would happen if we took a rat and we put him in a cage and we made sure that he always won his fights? What would happen? So they take this little rat and they put him against a smaller rat and he wins. Take him against another rat and it's a little bit bigger but they drug him and he wins. They take him again and they keep putting him against bigger and bigger rats that are drugged or they do something to incapacitate so that the little rat is always gonna win. And then when they, he's beating up bigger, tougher rats, they put him against a rat that's normal. He's big as hell, angry and ready to go. Not drugged, not incapacitated in any way. That little rat tears him the fuck up <laughs> because he believes I cannot be beat, right? The mind will trump the body. Mm. But because people have that weird fundamental belief that negative thoughts are true and positive thoughts are false when you think them, right? Not the one who luckily happened yeah. to be the biggest, strongest and so life is teaching him a certain lesson. But I'm saying, you're sitting in the truck, this, this for me, you're a person who woke yourself up out of the matrix, to use my language. Some people can wake themselves up, but the billion people that you're gonna touch can't. They're the billion people who are stuck, they're trapped, they're living somebody else's life, they're a slave to somebody mentally, physically, or both. But you woke yourself up. And I'm so fascinated by how you've done that that we're not getting off this stage until we teach people how to do it because there are other people out there who can wake themselves up. And if you give them that little nugget, I think it's this simple. Do and believe that which moves you forward. Done. I didn't say do and believe that which is true because that may not help you. You may be the little small rat. You may have by the laws of nature, every right to get your ass handed to you. Mm -hmm. You may have every right to be in jail and to spend the rest of your life in jail, but it's a choice. Mm -hmm. You can choose at that moment to believe something that's true that leads you down a dark path, which is most offenders reoffend. that's true. You can give in to that, we know where that goes. Or you can say, I've been rejected for 152 jobs. There's only one answer, start my own company. That moment right there, like I can't envision anything other than a flash of light, a spark of insight, a tectonic shift, a tsunami wave, something that transforms everything, right? 
And the crazy thing is, you're sitting in the back of a truck with no money, no home, and you still realize, I have to now change the things I allow myself to believe. True? Absolutely. I'm gonna clap, because <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> That, that to me, every time you speak, and I've seen you speak a lot, every time you speak, I can feel what you're doing to those people. And that's to give them the feeling, the feeling of something positive being true and real. But does it scare you to know that two hours later, they believe in all the negative shit again? Absolutely. And that's, that's one part of wealthy minds that I'm, I'm, I'm working on. You know, I don't wanna just come to your school and just hype you up for a day. I don't wanna just motivate you. I want you, I wanna stimulate you to that you become your own motivator. This is what I love to do. And I don't have to have money because money can't buy that type of feeling. You're really gonna reach these billion people and these people think that you're crazy. No one's gonna think I'm crazy when it happens. The day before something is a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea, right? It's Peter yeah, Diamandis exactly. has a, one of his laws, which that one in particular always hit me, right? Like to really believe in what you're doing, not when people are neutral, but to believe in it so much that when people attack you, when they assail you, when they troll you, call you an idiot, say that what you're doing doesn't make any sense, that in your heart you know that you have to persevere, right? that you're not afraid to be a unique color, you're not afraid to be um, different, you're not afraid to be a one-off, right? And what do we value most in art? We value most in art that which exists in one place only and is never to be replicated. The Mona Lisa is the Mona Lisa because there's only one. Mm. And yet what do we value in people? We value conformity. Mm. But yet in ourselves, we value individuality. It's like this incredibly weird mix of what we want for ourselves, what society wants for us, our desperate desire to conform because of evolutionary pressures to fit in so you didn't get eaten by a lion. I mean, uh, but to really break out of that and to be who you are authentically and to let the reflection be of your impact on people's lives, I think is incredible. What's your biggest fear? in terms of impacting people? Is it volume? Is it depth of impact? I mean, I honestly like to wake up and, and think that I don't have, no, have any fears. I might quote this wrong, but there's a, a mentor that I look up to who said, I live like a man who died 20 years ago and I live like a man who's dead already. His name is Malcolm X. It's a good um, quote. I live by these quotes, man. And, Anytime you show a sign of fear with me, it's a, to me, it's a sign of weakness. I want people to stop being afraid to speak their dreams into existence. Put that stuff in the universe. And if you watch some of in my speeches, I say there's a three step process where we would bring a person up and they would say, I need you to speak a concrete dream into existence. And they say, I speak into existence, dot, dot, dot. And then I'd say, who in here, let's say I speak into existence that I am going to be an author. Who in here is an author? Raise your hand. Who in here knows how to write books? Who can help this person with this dream? Well, that's relationships. Your dream is sitting right in front of you if you just ask the right questions. Why don't you think people pursue their dreams without that push? From living in Los Angeles, I think people would rather focus on having a big ego. Sometimes you got to remove your ego. It's like I say right now, I need help getting this dream. I don't mind. So is it that the ego stops them from asking for help? Oh man, I got a quote that says a lot of people's ego keep, keep them broke. That's true. And, but is it specifically that it stops them from asking for help? Or yeah, is some, it people else? Pride, some people don't want you to know that they're struggling. Some people don't want you to know that they're going through things. I don't mind, I'm transparent. I'm, I'll, be, I'll be the example for you to get up and live your dream. I don't care, like I got all types of problems, but it, it's okay to have problems if you know how to solve them. You know, and so uh, I'm not saying that's true for every single person. What I'm saying is I've learned to let my ego go. Like when I have great mentors who have taught me to say, you don't have to wear every hat in the business. You know, if you're not a good CEO, if you don't know how to manage people, hire somebody that's good with people. Maybe that's just not, maybe you're just a good motivator. You know, sometimes you have to take that seat back and let somebody, you know, do that. And you have to start trusting other people with your vision. So you said it's not bad to have problems if you know how to solve them. What advice do you have for people that have a problem and they have no idea how to solve it? How can they track down the solution? Um, I'll tell you what I do. I have great mentors that 
If I have a question about anything before I do any business deal and mess it up, I pick up the phone and I call them. What has truly helped me is the fact that I had a mentor who told me, I'm not going to teach you how to make money, but I'll teach you how to manage it. How'd you find the mentors? I spoke them into existence, but <laughs> you want you, but want you followed up with the actions, oh, and I want to know what the actions are. You know what's are. funny is I was looking at your Instagram, and you actually uh, you had one of my mentors on here, Keith Farazi. Mm. So let's walk through and, Keith. How'd you meet Keith? Uh, Keith, uh, I met Keith I think through a friend of mine by the name of Mark Goldstein, okay. who is actually Keith's business partner, and I did a radio show uh, in Los Angeles, and I ended up meeting Keith, and I and I liked him. You know, I read, I read his books, Never, uh, Never Eat Alone, Who's Got Your Back? You know, just those slogans based off what I write, it caught my attention. Mm. Like, what does never eat alone mean? You know, and I read it and I find out that when you go out to eat with people, it gives you an opportunity to get to know them. It's not about the meal. It's about can we build trust? Do you have integrity? You know, those are the things that I learned through hanging out with these people, seeing how they shake and move. I don't want... Keith to give me any money. I want him to teach me how to run a business, how to stay in business, how to build a brand. I would meet him every Saturday, uh, wherever he said meet him, and so I'm thankful for people like that. All right, if you had to boil your 5,000 quotes down to the three most powerful, most useful, what would the three be? Never spend your present time with a person that you don't have a future with, okay. period. That, that, that right there is number one. Number two is, I'll show you your future if you show me your five best friends. Mm. Another one from that is, most people can see, but not everyone has vision. And that one is the one that I'm actually living right now. Because um, when I sit, and I never want to sell a person on a, on a, on a false lifestyle mm. of like sitting on you know, private jets, traveling, being in Europe and Spain and you know, I've been, you know, you know, blessed. And what I mean by that is I like to show people the true struggles that I actually go through to get to this to this destination. Sure. You know, and when I say most people can see, but not everyone has vision, what that means to me is if you have a desire to be successful, you better be just as in love with failure. Like I love failing. I just wake up every day and see how many times I can fail. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Like, Why is it so useful? because failure will introduce you to success. You got a lot of people who are afraid to fail. I'm sure like, you know, even building Quest Studios, it's not like it worked out perfectly every single time you got up to put a brick up. You know, some days we have to wake up and put out fires before we can even get to the bricks. You're right on, that's exactly true. And I love that quote, um, failure will introduce you to success. So when I look at failure, um, and the reason that that really, really resonates with me is I think the mental process to failure goes something like this. Uh, it will hurt, right? So when you fail, your brain is designed to look at the ways in which that makes you an inadequate or inferior person. Um, you're looking for your place in the hierarchy, right? Because to yeah. misjudge your place in the hierarchy from a long ago tribal standpoint could get you in real danger. Humans are relativistic, right? They compare themselves to everybody that's around them, um, which is another thing about your point about show me who you're hanging around and I'll tell you about your future. But you're relativistic, you're looking for where you fit in. So you fail and you think, oh my God, I've just fallen down. But you have this desire to move up in the hierarchy, right? It's that thing that makes us an active species that propels us to go and conquer. People want to do great, they want to do big things. It's really rare. The only person who really hides in their room is somebody that is afraid that they haven't recognized their value yet. I'll use your own insight, right? They haven't recognized their value and therefore they diminish themselves. That failure that just happened confirms that they are less than they're trying to be, which they believe because negative thoughts are believed much more than positive thoughts. But someone like you kicks something in and that sting of feeling less is a trigger for a positive habit. And I think the thing that happened in your truck was that you started developing a habit of forcing yourself to be positive instead of negative. You said, I had to deactivate my mind to negativity and 
bring it to life in the world of the positive. Exactly. And I thought, wow, that's so smart. Somebody who recognizes what they've done is actively shut down the negative and actively create a positive mindset. So you use that negative sting as a trigger to go into the much less natural, but infinitely more powerful habit of saying these positive affirmations that push you to propel forward, the way that you stop yourself when you say a disempowering word and you change it into one, I'm not going to be a billionaire, I am a billionaire, right? Like all those little nuanced things that you do are what we'll call the psychological immune system. It's the thing that protects you from that feeling, but protects you by moving you forward, right? And that's what I think people have to focus on is the habits that you've created in your life because it's the habits that you've created, which are super rudimentary, right? Wake up, go to the gym, move heavy weights, like that's a habit. Mm -hmm. So adding that muscle intellectually or physically, it doesn't need to happen by accident. It can happen with high degree of intention. And it's the intentionality of your life that I found so interesting. It's the intentionality of your life that puts you in the seat. It's the intentionality of your life. It is not that it's come easily. It's the fact that you went to jail twice. It's the fact that you fucked up and said, hey, this isn't serving me. I'm gonna completely change everything about the way that I think. And you formed this new habit. And that habit has propelled you out of failure. It's the habits of being such a potent trigger to remember all of these things that you've created, all this beautiful stuff that you've put into the world that makes the failure so useful. It's how, it's not even so much maybe that it introduces you to success, it's that it hands you off to success, right? Because it's that new habit loop that was triggered. It's interesting. Here's one thing, so I use this to differentiate between somebody who has an employee's mindset and somebody who has an entrepreneurial mindset. It doesn't mean that you need to run a company just that you think in a certain way. Um, if you hit an obstacle and stop and relax because now there's nothing more to do, that, that's not somebody who's goal oriented, right? They're not saying I have a dream and I'm gonna make it come to fruition. Um, for most people, they hit the obstacle and the first thing that enters their mind is giving up, quitting, that it's too hard, it's impossible, whatever. So the thing that I think makes Wealthy Wednesday so special is that you focus it on accountable action because you make them come back. Mm -hmm. What kind of success rate do you have? Basically, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, a lot of times I weed out the people who are just talking. Mm -hmm. And people psychologically don't know what I'm actually doing to them, but I'm putting you on the spot of standing here and saying something, and now the whole world just saw you say that. Right. That's what I generally focus on. Mm -hmm. But a lot, of, a lot of them do come back. Like, we got this one kid who's a dancer. You know, his dream was to dance with, a, you know, a, a, a famous, you know, celebrity. And I couldn't guarantee it, but long story short, I said, hey, you dance, dance right here. There's some people right here that work with him. Mm. It happened. He spoke it into existence because he really could dance. He just needed the relationship. Mm. This particular guy, he's been through, I think, about 10 different foster homes. Wow. Um, you know, I met him speaking at a group home. And he said, nobody's ever clapped for my dream. Like, you know, thank you for doing that. There's a lot of people who sit up here. They've never had anyone support them like that, clap for them because sometimes we're pulled down so much that we don't even know that we're gifted. He didn't even know he was a great dancer. You know, to, to let people get up and just truthfully express, you know, who they are, and they still have a place where they're accepted, someone's gonna hug them, you know, and we're gonna mentor you to get to the destination of wherever you wanna be. I'm not here to be Superman or any of that. I'm just here to tell people that it's okay to have problems and some group of people out there will still love you. You don't have to run around here and, and hide yourself and not be you. Like, I'm very, I'm not happy, I'm joyful. You know, I'm, I live Define my, the difference for me. Me personally, I think happy is temporary. The example that I would give is if you walked up to a, a homeless man and you gave him $100, I think he would be happy to have the $100. But if you took 15 steps and turned around and said that it was fake, I think you I think he'd be, you know, sad then, but a joyful homeless person would be joyful regardless of the situation, regardless of the outcome. You know, whether I'm rich or I'm broke, this is who I am. My dream is to really to teach people how to run a business the right way through my failures. You know, when I sold the 5,000 shirts, my friend said, "Hey, you know, uh, you, you you have you uh, incorporated anything?" I didn't even know what that was. I just I my mentor at the time said, "Well, what's your philosophy on business?" My philosophy on business is make more money than you spend. 
It's good. But that's the only, and he said that's the only philosophy you need. I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but I buy something <laughs> for five dollars, I sell a T-shirt for thirty. I don't mind telling people because I, it's not. I'm not selling you. Uh, 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 it's, it's not monetary for me. When people come in and you get a t-shirt that says, I don't look for jobs, I create them, I stimulate you to create your own job. You don't need me. I don't mind. I mean, my company isn't going nowhere. You know, nobody's gonna stop us from living our dreams. And when you have this type of force, like it's really hard to stop that, you know? And I speak into existence that Inside Quest gonna get this big, you know, television show and we gonna be back on Inside Quest. That's what I'm speaking into existence. <laughs> my man. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Absolutely incredible, incredible. Guys, this is one of those people you're gonna to wanna to go deep on, you're gonna to wanna to watch his videos, you're gonna to wanna to see what he's about, and you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself one very simple question. Is there anything that I can do to help? He's got an amazing mission to help a billion people. I can't think of anything more profound or beautiful than that at the end of the day. I think he's right. Joy is the thing that lasts. Happiness is temporary. And when you tap into the things that really bring you joy, something that brings you fulfillment, something that you believe in and you're willing to fight for. And for me, that's everything. For me, the thing that you love enough, whether it's the movie that you're trying to get made, whether it's helping a billion people, whether it's launching a company, or for me, whether it's the food revolution and really trying to make change, no matter what you're trying to do, you're gonna need a certain level of energy and intensity to show up every day, to learn from your failures, to constantly reassess what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and what about yourself you have to change in order to accomplish what you want to accomplish. And digging deep in this man, reading his quotes, seeing the way that he internalizes the world and he synthesizes that knowledge and gives something back that's usable, don't be blinded by the beauty of the words. Find the truth that lies underneath. That's what this guy is all about. My friend, where can they find you? Uh, you can lead with me at Billionaire PA. That's my, that's our Instagram, and that's pretty much it. We got enough followers in the world, so I'm looking for leaders to help us to, you know, change the world. Nice. That's our, and our, our website is WealthyMindsOnline.com. Go there, get wealthy, get motivated, and have a healthy day. <laughs> With that, until next week, be legendary, my friends. Take care. Brother, man.